When you're in space, bring your cat. Fuck. <laughs> Jonesy was the bad guy. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Jonesy was in on it the whole goddamn time. <laughs> Jonesy's like the main character of the show. Jonesy is the evil one of the story. <laughs> it's like, hey, alien, they're okay. over here. They're over here, dude, alien. Did you see, <laughs> did, you see the, did you see the cat's face <laughs> when that one dude was getting chomped? And it flashed to Jonesy, and his he, eyes were all just evil, and he's he like... He was into it. <laughs> <laughs> Jonesy was the bad guy. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. Mind if I give it a shot? Please do. What's the matter? <laughs> So anyway, we're talking about Alien. Aliens, 1979. Ridley Scott. Fuck, I love that guy. Um, great filmmaker. I'm gonna name my next cat Jonesy. You should. It's a good name for a cat. It's probably gonna kill you. One hundred percent is gonna kill. Like, man, if I'm dead, I don't care if they eat me. Whatever. <laughs> That's spoken like a true cat person. What do I care? Really nice of you. <laughs> At least I'm sustaining something. Alien. Jonesy. Nineteen seventy nine. Jude, take it away. All right, sir. Nineteen seventy nine. Alien. Rated R with a runtime of one hour fifty seven minutes. This had a budget of eleven million dollars. What do you think this brought into the box office? <sighs> I would like to point out that when we were talking about The Shining. Which were at least the same year. Shining's budget was thirty million, so the, this was more around the the <clears throat> average movie. It's budget cheaper to film out in space. How much yeah. did you say? Eleven. Eleven million dollars. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, I'm gonna say it brought in seventy five. Okay. We're playing prices right. Yeah. I'm gonna go one dollar, Bob. <laughs> less than okay. So anything less than uh, seventy five. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say like fifty five, sixty. Okay. One hundred and six wow. million dollars. Whoa. That's fantastic. Great. You want to know what it's about? Uh, yeah. The crew of the Nostromo have been sent off course to investigate a, dist a distress signal. While the captain and a select few go exploring, Ripley and Ash, an evil robot, stay behind. When a crew member sticks his face into a xenomorph pod, he gets the gut punch of his life and having been brought back onto the ship, unleashes the perfect killing machine to wreak havoc among what's left of the crew. And that distress call? Nope, that was a warning to stay the fuck away. But it's too late now. The alien, who's definitely partnering with the cat, tracks each member of the crew down until all that's left is Ripley and the evil alien sympathizing cat, Jones. Not knowing the cat has been working with the alien all along, Ripley escapes to the shuttle and flips the self-destruct switch on the Nostromo, fleeing to safety just as the ship explodes. But the alien is already on board, where he and Jones lie in wait to finish off that <laughs> bitch human and then take over the galaxy. Discuss. I get it. She gets it. I, I love the fact that we all dialed in on the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Like that freaking cat. That freaking cat is in on it. Yeah. It, that, that one scene, this is worth skipping ahead, but that one scene where, where Ridley runs back to try to shut down Rip, the self-destruct. Rip, Ripley. Ripley, sorry. Ripley runs back to try and shut down the machine. And the, the aliens like looking at the cat inside the box. That cat was like, she's gonna blow up the ship, get in the freaking Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And you then gotta it, go, bro. Yeah, you gotta you, go. High yeah, five, real yeah, quick. Cool. We got this. All right. Yeah. You and I together, <laughs> kill this bitch. Yeah. Go that way. Mm -hmm. She'll be there in a few minutes. Just hide. Yeah. Yeah. 100% what that cat said to that thing. Freaking, like, you're jo right. Jones is the bad guy. I, I, I is totally get it. An evil cat. Yes. He may or may not be friends with the alien. He may just be pretending to be everyone's friend and then he's just going to kill everyone off. He's a survivor. Yeah. He's, <laughs> well, was he's the final Was Jonesy cat. friends with the, uh, with the uh, guy who the alien came from? Um, no. No. Cause Jonesy, whose cat was Jonesy's? Was it? Uh, it was a ship cat. It was Ripley's cat. Was it Ripley's cat? Yeah. Or I thought it was uh, Dallas's cat. For some reason, I thought I've always thought it was Ripley's cat. cat. It's a ship cat. It's a ship cat. It's a stray. Just, I mean, if it, if it wasn't Ripley's cat, 
Ripley wouldn't have cared so much to try to like go back and get it so many times and carry that stupid cat box. I could, I could have sworn it was Harry Dean Stanton's cat. Maybe you're right. I don't Maybe, know, but I've always gone. I've gone under the assumption that which one is Harry cat. Dean Stanton? He, he's the first guy who gets killed. He's yeah, the, oh, the chestburster guy. Yeah. No, oh. no, 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 no. That, that's John Hurt. Um, but Harry Dean Stanton's like. Um, yep. With the guy, right. That they were like, yeah, go right get it. He's, oh. he's the really, the really skin engineer, skin okay. engineering guy. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So he's the one who dies from the yeah. full-grown yeah. xenomorph. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, gotcha. It might have been his. Yeah, because that's maybe that is that why he was like, oh, it's just Jonesy, let him go. And they were like, dude! Let him go! What the hell are you doing, man? It's a cat, man. Yeah. <laughs> go get your fucking cat. God feel, damn it. Yeah. Okay, it makes I, sense. I feel like though, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Very much ahead of ourselves. Um this movie still holds up. Movie, freaking work of art. I mean, dude. I mean, there there are things. If this movie was remade today, they it would the, be worse. The, the computer graphics on the monitors would be a little bit different and stuff. You know, you know. But I I was super. I haven't seen this movie probably eight, nine, ten years. Yeah, yeah. Probably oh that. wow. Um, I always skip the, just Aliens. I always go to the same. Same. Movie. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, it's a great oh, movie. Man, this is like a yearly rewatch for me. But. I was completely impressed, and this is on my shitty computer monitor mm. that I need to get upgraded. But the 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 grimy, the dingy, the the the, the spaceship submarine battle spaceship. Kind I know of what like you're saying. Navy yeah. ship kind of motif. The industrial the, the, motif. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It is so good. Yeah. This thing looks exactly like a movie that if, if they remade this movie right now, you would make it the exact same way. It wouldn't look any different except for maybe some modern screen upgrade, more, more flat screens instead of well, you know, that kind of stuff. I, but it looks great. I it, actually, it holds up really well. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but I disagree with you. I think if they made this movie now, it would look worse. Oh, yeah. Because they, yeah, made, yeah, yeah. It, they made essentially a prequel to this movie. Mm-hmm. With modern technology, yeah, well, modern space well, shit. You can't do that. And it's it's nonsense. It's like, it's, it's, it's it like, looks like every other generic sci-fi movie. It's like Star movie. Trek bullshit where they like try to like make something old look new. new that's supposed to be from fifty years yeah. ago. So it yeah. doesn't look it doesn't work. In my head canon, uh in the future, all these like kind of low rent space hauler things mm-hmm. are done by the lowest bidder. Uh-huh. And yeah. so they use outdated technology because it's cheaper. That works. Yeah. That's yeah. that's my head canon. But you know, you know, I mean, the way they thought of what stuff would look like in 1979 when yeah. this movie came out, which means they made this in 1978, 1977 yeah. in times, right? Um, Fun fact, Ridley Scott. It, it was it was good. The reason why Ridley Scott went with like the used industrial vibe yeah. was because of George Lucas. Yeah. Because he well, saw Star Wars well, and he's like, oh, look at the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. That thing's a piece of shit. Yeah. These guys are space truckers. Right. Yeah. Okay? These aren't like, Scientist. And before These Star are, Wars, this is a giant tugboat pushing yeah. a fucking load of. It's a mining facility. It's, it's a. It's a. Yeah. yeah. It's a. It's a haul truck in space. Right. I, I believe Ridley Scott said that there were three influences on this film. The first one was Star Wars. Mm-hmm. The second one was 2001: Space Odyssey. Sure. And the third one was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I get all those. I, get I see it. all yeah, those yeah. things in this. Yeah. But, um, but, but what I'm saying is, is I I, I think. I don't see a lot of movies from 1979 that hold up as well as this one does as far as graphics and, and yeah. special effects and that kind of stuff. Ex- with the exception of when the Nostromo blows up at the very end. It's a little chintzy. Yeah. This movie could have been made in 1997. Yeah. It wouldn't, and I wouldn't have been able to tell you I, the I, difference. I love the aesthetic of this movie. Mm-hmm. It, it's such a freaking just work of art. Like I, the, the feeling of all the ships interior and exterior, mm-hmm. they're, they're tangible. They got weight to them when they're doing the de-docking, when they're about to go down to the, to the, yeah. uh, what was it? Planet 487 or yeah, whatever. That was the name very, of the very Kubrick. Yeah. It was so cool. I, mm-hmm. I, every bit of this movie visually to me is just stunning. And I, I also, I'm sure Kadish can speak more to this intelligently than I can, but the, the way that they use music and, or audio cues, yeah. And lack thereof, like when there's complete silence and there's just like a light ticking in the background, mm-hmm. it freaking puts you on edge. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what's happening; it could be a fake out. Could nothing could happen. Yeah, the motion sensor. Yeah, the motion sensor, but no music. And then there's moments where you're like listening to just somebody breathing when they're inside the spaceship helmet and they can't yeah. hear anything externally. It there's a scene, and I this it, is- it almost seems like a mistake, but there's a scene where um, what's the 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 black guy's name? Um, 
God, I can't remember his character's name. Does anybody yeah, know? I just call him Yafit Koda. Okay. That's his name. Yafit Koda. Great, great character in the show, by the way. But um, when he's being killed by the alien, there's scenes of him screaming, but there's no audio. It's like mute. Mm-hmm. And then like a few, a few frames later, the screen picks up. Parker. Parker, thank you. It almost seems like a mistake because you're like, oh, I'm looking at this guy's face and he's screaming because he's being murdered by this thing, but there's no nothing to follow it, no audio. It's it's an unsettling use of audio that I just freaking appreciate the hell out of in this whole movie from start to beginning. Start to beginning? From beginning to end. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you for the picture. Who was that, R2? Yeah, my yeah. man R2 in there. Uh, yeah, also, I'm sure you guys know, this movie's 40-something years old or whatever. Um this has been talked about at length, but all the the weird sexual penetration. <laughs> you were really in on that it's, stuff last Dude, night. if you look, like, I, I watched a documentary on this movie, and I was like, oh, my God, yeah. yeah. It, it's all of it is about, like, shoving things down people's throats and and forcing birth and, like, <laughs> vaginal motifs. And, like, it's yeah. like, ugh. It's just like, whoa, man. That's freaking graphic if you really think about it. That's the H.R. Geiger influence. Oh, yeah. That guy's nuts. Um, yeah. But yeah, his art his art was weird. But yeah, this this freaking I just gush over this movie. This movie's amazing. Yeah, you you know what's funny is that you know Ridley Scott his background was in art design, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like he he was like an art designer for movies, and then he made the leap into directing. And in, especially in his early work, like Blade Runner, Alien, like Legend stuff yeah. like this, the worlds that he crafts for his movies feel real. Mm-hmm. And that's what made his early work so special, in my opinion. Because, like, when you watch this movie, the set designs are amazing. Mm-hmm. And they instantly set the mood. And it it's just, like, it's creepy, but at the same time, it's believably industrial yep. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, like, like, for instance, the mother room, like, when they go in and consult with mother, it's a completely different aesthetic yeah. than, like, the rest of the ship. Yeah, and then like the the sleeping pods where it's like this very sterile, like you know, just kind of like plain Jane white room type thing. Like, like there are different different areas of the ship have different feels to them. Yeah. When when I watched this movie last night, I was I was asking myself in my head, it's like, this is how I picture these things being on spaceships someday. But what I was wondering was, is like, is it because I watched this movie when I was ten years old, and that's what got imprinted in my head, <laughs> or if this is just how I think of these things. He's awake. It's like, it's like, this is what a sleeping chamber is supposed to look like. You know, this is what, uh, when I want to go into my, into the room and talk to how to talk to how 9,000 or chat GPT or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go in a room with all the white walls and the lights. White you, you know, walls, it's it's yeah. really strange, you know, so I don't, I don't know what, what influenced me as far as what my internal, my internal visualization of what these things are supposed to look like. Yeah. But if, but if you, before I had watched this movie yesterday, if you had told me to go draw a picture of a, what a, a hibernation, a hibernation yeah. room is going to look like for a crew, you know, it's like, so I would have drawn that same yeah. exact thing. The all white with tubes yeah, on the floor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it, it. it was very strange that this, this movie is very influential in ways that I hadn't realized. Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? As far as shaping how I feel about, sci-fi and, and and that kind of thing yeah so i want to get cool. the uh the resident horror fans thoughts on this jude what's your thoughts on alien um so it's been a good minute since i've seen this movie i didn't realize how long it had been inst- until i was like oh i forgot about that part oh yeah i forgot about that uh i've seen aliens mm-hmm. a million times right and much more recently because we reviewed it for the show not lo- not that long ago and it's uh a couple of years Maybe a year or two. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> you, you don't remember us reviewing Aliens? The, no. the one that we all gave five-star reviews? Oh, let's do it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Aliens is uh, my preference mm-hmm. as far as where the franchise is. Um, I agree with you about like how the, uh, the set looks and the ship looks... It's so real. Mm -hmm. And I love the chemistry between the characters. But I do have some problems with it. Oh, really? Okay. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't find this that scary. Hmm. I find the alien a little, um, 
the alien always just looks like he's hamming it up for me. <laughs> like as soon as he busts out the chest, he's like, ba -dum, ba -dum, okay. ba -dum, ba -dum. That, I can't yeah. not, I can't not <laughs> Dude, see that. Goddamn That's, Mel Brooks. That same thing <laughs> happened to me, and I'm hundred percent like fucking space ball. <laughs> But it's true. And like every time you see like a, a full shot of the alien, he looks like he's like, hey, get a load of me. Is the jazz yeah, hands? Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. And he looks silly to me. So I I, and okay. I, I can't get scared. All right. Um, but like when they when they dock down and they're like uh trying to explore, that looks so fucking good. Yeah. Uh and I hate Lambert. Lambert oh, is a completely useless yeah. character for me. She's she's she could, lady, right? she's she could just distress. not yeah. be mm -hmm. in the whole yeah. movie and it would be a better movie for me. Yeah, well, she's supposed to be that character that's like, oh my God, guys, I'm freaking out. Like, you, This movie doesn't need her. You don't think so? No. I, I think it's a necessary element to the whole thing. I had forgotten how much of a badass Ripley was. Oh, Ripley's awesome. Yeah. You yeah. know, no, I want to touch on this just really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and I mentioned this last night in the chat a little bit. Um, but I get, I get really tired really fucking tired of all these modern day movie watchers who who say all these women in these new movies are the first of this and first of that and all this kind of bullshit, you know, with all their feminism and all their nonsense. Um, 1979, Ripley was a badass female main character in a fucking horror action movie yeah. that everybody loved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I um, think the point and and for for people to come, don't let the woman talk. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jude. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I lost my Are you sure? Did you need no, no, another no. four? <laughs> no, I, lost, I just lost my thought. So no. Uh, no, I think the point of like Ripley being such a badass is that like the different the di the difference is when we're making movies today. The the point of a strong female character is that, is that she's, she's yeah. a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 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 character of Ripley, like she's just a human who happens to be a woman who's a badass, right. and that makes her so much richer of a character. So okay, so so you get the scene where where they to bring in what's his face back from from the engineer ship, right? Yeah, he's got the face hugger on, and they're they're yeah. in the quarantine Is that room. Kane, yeah, open open the door, Ripley I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, Ripley, open the door. And no, she was I can't right. do it. Yeah. and she's hundred percent correct. And then you got this fucking asshole, evil robot, Caucasian, evil fucking male robot who just says, fuck you, Ripley, I'm going to do what I want and opens the fucking door. Yeah. And, and then she it, confronts him about uh, it. Too. Yeah. It's like, hey, do, uh, you're a science it, it, you officer. Know, you know, it was like, so, so I guess what I'm, I don't, how do I say this? The, the misogyny was real in 1979. Of course right. it was. You know what I'm saying? I mean, sure. I mean, and, and they played it up correctly. I, I, I and, and, you know, Ash did, got what he got coming to him. So, did, do you, so, fun fact, and this maybe I wonder if this will change your uh -huh. your take on this is that Ripley was originally written as just a male character. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, actually, so like the script was originally gender neutral. Like none of the characters had any sex assigned to them because they didn't mm -hmm. know who they were going to cast yet. Right. And so basically, like the the character of Ripley and and Dallas and all these people, uh, they they were just. Characters. Like, like they were just, just characters. Just yeah, well written yeah. characters. I guess, I guess I guess what I'm saying is is like if this movie was made now, right? Yeah. It, it wouldn't look any different. Because they checked, checked all the boxes. All the boxes were checked for this movie <laughs> without any thought about being check boxes. You, Possibly. Know, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um and and I'm just trying to like throw a little a sprinkle of modern day thought onto this because it just I, I'm not sure if people would appreciate this movie as much if it came out in theaters today as they did in 1979. Maybe. What Speaking of that? checking boxes though. What? We have to shout out our sponsor for the day's oh, yeah, video. Yeah. Criticless. Guys, if you want to review this movie, which we did a great watch party together. Mm -hmm. We shouted out on Criticless in our group. Uh, we had like 11 people. 11, something, 12 people yeah, 11 or 12 people watching Alien with us on Monday nights at 9pm. You can join us on our Discord server. That's but cool. Specific time. Um, but Criticless is sponsoring this video, and we would like to encourage you guys all to start an account over there at uh, Criticless.com on your desktop or download it on your Apple and Android devices and uh, start an account and go review this movie in particular because we all like, we were like, hey, okay, go review this movie so we can talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. And um, 
It only had a few. This is a, the brand new app, guys. And what I really love about it is how it gamifies the review process. So you guys can go in there. It has great little sliders that you can choose from anywhere from bogus to decent to most excellent as far as the grade of the movie goes. And also, when you review a movie, it breaks it down by like these little spectrums. You'd be like, oh, is it violent? Yeah, it's a chestburster. Uh, is it family <laughs> friendly? Maybe. You're a little fucked up. Yeah. Um, and then, like, is on it, your family. And speaking of the whole thing, is it political? Well, I don't know. In my opinion, no. No. But somebody else could watch it from that viewpoint that you were just mentioning about the misogyny and this and that, whatever. And you could do, and is it sexual? There's a, a slider for that too. Is it sexual? Yeah, there's a lot of sexual motifs going on in this movie. <laughs> like a lot. Um, so it's, it's a, no sex. No sex. A little bit of a butt crack. A, a little bit of a butt crack. And you can put that on the slider. You could <laughs> underneath each slider is a little place where you can put notes. And you can say, oh yeah, I saw uh, Sigourney Weaver's butt crack in this movie. Um, it's a great way to review movies. Great way to build a community too. Uh, the people that are there right now, a lot of our fans of the show, a lot of other people that have found the app um, are just going crazy reviewing all kinds of movies. So I highly suggest go check this app out. It's amazing. I have a blast doing it. The community surrounding it is movie fans for the sake of being movie fans. It's not infested with a bunch of nonsensical people who just say something's yep. good because they're getting a paycheck. These are people like us who just want to sit around and be like, oh yeah, freaking remember that Alien movie? Freaking awesome. Yep. And you go review a movie. Criticalist.com or on your Apple and Android device. Critic List. You can read his hat right there for the spelling. Boom. Critic Less. Critic Less. All right. Jude, you wanted to say something. I forget what it was. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're talking about checking boxes. Yeah, checking boxes and, and female characters um, being in this movie. I, I love... Oh, he was talking about remakes, if they yeah, remade yeah. it today. So what I would never want to see is a remake of this no. where everyone looks pretty. Mm, and yeah, that, like and, Prometheus? Yeah, and, that, and that's what they're... What, that's every single movie that they come out with today, everyone has to be like fully made up and their hair looking gorgeous yeah. and no one gets dirty or ugly or beat no, up, these especially are, not the women. These are like truck and drivers. That's you know? what makes this movie feel so real mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. because the characters get fucked up and no one's worried about like touching up their mascara while the scene is going. Yeah. You, I had, you know, I, what's funny is, is the casting of this movie because Sigourney Weaver at the time was a complete unknown, but originally Meryl Streep, you know, F you Meryl <sighs> Streep, uh, <laughs> she, she was going to be um, uh, Ripley. Oh, oh no. And, oh, no. And, no. And, no, and, no, no, no. And uh, Sigourney Weaver was uh, Meryl Streep's uh, roommate in college. Uh, so like when Meryl Streep dropped out because um, she had like a, some type of family tragedy, um, she recommended that uh, Sigourney Weaver be cast in the role. And originally um, the character of Dallas was going to be Harrison Ford. Mm. And, oh. and if you think about it, like, you know, Dallas dies halfway through the movie and he's kind of set up to be like the captain, the main character, stuff yeah. like that. And it would have been a real kind of like mind fuck if Harrison Ford just got killed off in the middle of the movie. So I think that that was a little bit of a missed opportunity, but Harrison Ford was basically like, I don't want to do another sci-fi film after Star Wars. Yeah, you know, I guess yeah. it's just, to me, it's just, it's, it's, we've had strong woman characters in movies for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. They're not new. This is not a new thing in movies like people act like it is these days. Oh, that's, I, love, that's, that's, well, I guess that's all I'm really trying to the, say. The here. famous quote from Jennifer Lawrence when she did uh, did the Mockingbird movies or whatever. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, I'm like the first female that they've ever put no, in an action not. movie. No, you're not. not even she has since come out and said, okay, I, I misspoke. Uh, that was taken out of context. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not what I meant. I'm sure she did. But I'm t but you also get people like Elizabeth Banks saying that there's like not enough female you know, action stars or whatever. Like, hey, go watch some freaking movies. Yeah. You mean the same Elizabeth Banks who tried to me too Steven Spielberg? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, it didn't um, go too well for her. No, no. So just, I, that, that scene where she's I'm like, just, "Oh, just, Steven Spielberg, you've never had a strong female in any of your movies," and somebody from the crowd goes, "The yeah. color purple." She's like, <laughs> "Oh shit." The, 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 the last thing I want to say on that kind of like part of the topic, yeah. is is that uh, strong female characters existed long before 2012 or yeah. whatever. And it was just well-written characters. Just, just well-written characters and we, That's all, all and we love them all. Yeah. Ripley's awesome. Yeah. She's so freaking awesome. good. I, I, yeah. I love the the when she confronts Dallas about the whole situation. Yeah. Excuse me. She, she was she, strong. Open yeah. the door, Ripley. I can't do that. I can't. It's against policy. Yeah. You know why it's against policy. 24 hours. But even after that, when she addresses him in the hallway and yeah. he's trying to like scoot away and mm -hmm. she's like, fuck this. And she closes the door on him and uh -huh. he's like, God damn it. He's, it's like, hey, if, man, if they have, I'm talking to you. Right. Sorry. I'm talking to you. I need an answer for why you just potentially put everybody on here at risk. If they had all survived, she would have 
been the captain of the next one, and Dallas would have been her first person. Yeah, because he would have got demoted. Can we, by the company or whatever. I don't know, you know. that company uh, they yeah. work for sucks. Speaking of this, is a great segue. I love the conspiracy behind what the company's doing. Oh yeah, because there was people in the chat when we were watching this on Discord. When they were like, oh, did the, does the company know about the alien at this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. They know about it. They've studied it, but they don't have a live specimen. Right. When they found out that the location that they're going to had something that might be alive, they specifically, and it's stated in the movie, they swapped out the original science officer with Ash two days before they left <laughs> and said, you're going to go to this location and you're going to get this thing for us. Everything else is secondary. The, the payload from the, from the Nostromo, don't care. Uh, crew, the, the crew expendable expendable like ash your job is to go and do this yeah mm -hmm. and, and ash is a robot so he's programmed to just follow the order yeah. right yeah also i remember the first time i ever watched this movie and you see that like little white bead of sweat come down ash's yeah. forehead yeah yeah and then like when his head comes off oh, like all the, all the white blood starts spraying out, like you're just like what the fuck yeah, oh, yeah. it's a very yeah. what the fuck moment <laughs> yeah yeah because you, you find out oh he's an android but it brings up a, co a question too: Is like, why did he freak out like that? And in, this is my head yeah. Cannon. I was I was kind of I asked that last night I, yeah. to you, and I go, why would uh, Android sweat? That's so, weird. It just so I, I don't have any basis for this. It's just mm -hmm. me as a movie fan watching this movie trying to justify what's happening on screen. There might be some comic book somewhere that explains it, but in my head, the the all the famously robots in movies typically have like a do no harm policy in yeah. their programming. Like you cannot harm humans. And I think the Bishop, Asimov rules. Bishop yeah. in the second movie he also abides by that. Like, yeah. we cannot harm humans. So the company was somehow diverting Ash's hard programming to say, instead of do no harm, no, if you need to harm these people to get them out of your way, that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it freaking bugged him out. Yeah, his programming just couldn't handle the fact that he was going about to kill Ripley. That makes sense. And he like, and that's why he goes, blah, 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 blah. he like I'm, freaks I'm, out. I'm and does okay circles. with that. That works yeah, for me. That's my justification. I don't I don't, know. Comment below if you guys know yeah. something more solid, concrete from a comic book, or or Ridley Scott says something himself or whatever. I don't. I don't know if you're right. Yeah, but my head canon can can accept. That. And I'm I'm going off of my own personal thought on this with the Asimov rules mm -hmm. and also Aliens, the sequel to this, where Bishop was like, I'm programmed to not do any harm. Yeah, the Ash was obviously originally programmed to not do any harm, but then they were like, "Hey, uh, kill all these people and get this thing for us." And he mean, was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, rewrite this company, movie. man." Yeah, I'm gonna rewrite this movie, but instead of Ripley being rescued in Aliens Two or whatever, she's gonna get picked up by a predator ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love okay, it. Cool. All right. <laughs> Um, interesting. Have you, has any of you guys played or heard of Alien Isolation, the video game? I have not. I've seen Kiddish? it, but it looks... Oh, okay, listen, for all the fans that are watching this and for you guys here, I know you two play video games a little bit. Um, Alien Isolation is the freaking pitch perfect. Is it a shooter? No. No, it's a, it's a survival horror. All right. Uh, first person survival, survival horror game, but it's based in this world and it takes place between Alien and Aliens. It's Ripley's daughter goes and tries to find her what happened to her mom. Hmm. And uh, she gets involved in this big thing that happens on this ship and she has to go explore and it has to be a xenomorph on the ship. <laughs> and you're, you're playing through and you're like basically trying to investigate what happened. It, it's, it's very in-depth like Wayland, like what's going on with the mm -hmm. company, what's going on with these people, why is everything corrupt, why are the robots trying to kill everybody? Like it's very, very deep. But the most important thing about that game is it gets that atmosphere that we all love so much, that tangible, real feeling, the 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 music motifs and the audio. It's all in this game. You put cool. some headphones on, you play this game in the dark. I got it. Pretty I, scary. I have a question about the movie. Yeah. Maybe maybe Matthew has an and Matthew. Why are we calling him Matthew? Maybe Matt has a um <laughs> um an answer. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Why is everything in this movie so wet? Do you have any answer for that? Do, do, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, everything in this movie is wet. Even the afterburners on the on the ship at the end mm. is wet. It's yeah. weird. So um, they would often use uh, glycerin uh, on the actors, just spritz it on them, um, and it's a lighting trick. It's it's meant to like when you add liquid to um, like a set, it creates like a sheen to it, and it gives it like a different feel. And Ridley Scott, being like you know an art director, he was very cognizant of this, and so like he wanted 
to add elements to the feel of the sets and the actors and stuff like that. In fact, uh, you know, the blue lasers in the, uh, in the um, alien ship where all the eggs are underneath that. Yeah. Um, so like, you, you know, they created a mist so that you could see the lasers and they actually stole those from uh, the opposite sound stage where the who was practicing <laughs> uh, with, with uh, you know, their, their stage show. So those are actually the who's lasers That's awesome. uh, in, in there. But, um, you know, Ridley Scott just being like the visionary that he was at the time, um, use these techniques and, you know, they would just pour KY jelly down like the xenomorph just oh, to, just to make it like look creepier and stuff mm. like that. And so like th that's pretty much the only reason that they did it was like, whenever you add liquid to light, it creates like an enhancement that you normally wouldn't get. Yeah. And for the in canon solution to that, especially the afterburners things, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, isn't this a wet movie view? Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's even well, they, even, they even the, when the first guy gets killed, yeah, they go to the cooling room, towers, right? And he's like looking up, he's like, oh. just dripping. I was like, if I'm in a spaceship, yeah, and I got a water leak coming down on me that hard, that can't be good. That's not good. <laughs> that's not there's something but they're, wrong. They're not in part of the spaceship that's like electronically based. That's all like the industry stuff. That's okay. like there's there's steam. So the involved. mining part. It's of the, the mining part okay. of the ship. All right. Um, and also, I think they said that specifically, oh, he disappeared in the cooling towers. So it's like the cool, <laughs> like, okay, so what are they going to use to cool the engines and all that stuff? Liquid, what it, water, yeah, maybe. Right. So that's kind of where they came Coolant. from. Coolant. Coolant. Um, but also the afterburner thing, that scene that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, at the very end. I justify that. I, I think I know it's just like a, it's like a visual trick to make it look like it's like moving or shooting yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that, that was one of the few things in this movie that didn't work for me. So it's the escape pod. Yeah. So it doesn't get used very often. So there's going to be a lot of ice buildup. Oh, okay. But ice buildup on that yeah. ship, when she actually turns the burners on, it melts all that ice and then it gets shot out towards the camera. I think right. that's my justification point. Uh, it works, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. It just, it just seems like there's a lot of liquid water dripping and For sure. flowing. And steam and like random yeah, things. Yeah, a lot of steam. A lot of, lot of stuff boiling around. It's the aesthetic. You know, one of the cool aspects of this movie was them giving the alien acidic blood. Yeah. yeah, that's original. Yeah, it, 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 it brought a whole new element to it because basically they were in a, like the writers were in a situation where it's like, why can't they just get a gun and shoot the alien? And they're like, well, what if by shooting it, you breach the hull of the ship, right? And so like it, it gave an actual in-story justification as to why like they couldn't just like, you know. Kill like, it. Like kill yeah. it, yeah. I love it. So, I mean, there's, I mean, they devote a whole two-minute section of the movie to us. It. like they cut the arm off of the face hugger. Yeah. And it, and it like drips <laughs> it's down like, like oh my god that's gonna like eat through the whole of the ship yeah yeah so many movies nowadays don't bother to justify anything in their narrative mm -hmm. but like if you look at this movie like they talk about inertial dampers they talk about artificial gravity they talk about you know they give a reason why they can't just kill the alien because it's got acidic blood yep. you know like they they have characters be smart where ridley's like or ripley's like I'm not going to let you in on following quarantine protocol. But then like the the robot, which you find out later, mm -hmm. was acting under orders, right. lets them in. But even up to that point, he's he's like, you know, my commanding officer was giving me an order. I was just following orders, you know. So like the, there's so much smart stuff in the screenplay that justifies every decision that's made in the screen, in, in the movie. And so many movies nowadays just gloss over that. Like yeah. they, they just have plot logic holes. They're like, this needs to happen. Otherwise we wouldn't have a movie type thing. But this was back in the era when people still bothered to sit down and think out their narrative and be like, okay, how can we justify all the decisions? How can we justify all the plot points? And as somebody who's worked in an industry similar to what these guys <laughs> yeah. are doing, like the crew dynamic that Jude mentioned, like that, those interactions, 100% real. Down here for you better stay the fuck out of my way. Yeah, I'd like to see what you're going to do. Anybody ever tell you you looked at me? <laughs> <laughs> Will you listen to me, Parker? Shut up! Let's get you're, you're on some shit job, and you're freaking just mining, whatever. You're doing the industrial, industrial stuff, chemical processing, whatever it is. That crew dynamic exists. Like you got the one guy who's just like, "Freaking, what the company it's wants like, us to do?" It's like, God. Hold on a second. Before I do anything more, we how, need, we how need much am I getting paid? How much we need to talk paid? about uh, how many shares I'm gonna yeah yeah pull yeah. Off. There's that guy. It's like, well, you signed a I'm contract. I'm not doing man. extra work for no extra pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they also have the plot point where they said like, if we don't respond to this, you know, um, our bonus call, yeah. 
Yeah, like, like like we don't get paid at all because yeah. like they'll revoke those because it's international or intergalactic law or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can totally see something like that. Hundred I mean, yeah. percent, dude. That crew dynamic exists. They're like, supposed yeah, to yeah. be on their way home. Yeah, yeah, you got the guy who's who's I'm not doing anything extra unless I'm getting paid. And then you got the other guy who just wants to complain about everything that he's told to yeah, do. Right? Then you got the guy who's like, right. listen, man, you can complain all day. We still have to freaking do the you job. That useless Lambert who's just upset and fretting <laughs> yeah. the whole movie. She was the navigator. <laughs> She's useless. But that that whole crew dynamic 100% exists, and I think that's what makes it feel so real and tangible. Mm-hmm. You're watching these characters, and you actually... It did. Yeah. So you know very, what very saved, organic. You yeah. know what would have saved everyone? is a faster fucking translator. <laughs> you know what would have saved everybody? Not having a goddamn cat on board. Because <laughs> that cat... Truth. That cat led to every death in this freaking movie. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> percent. Freaking Jonesy was the you bad know, guy. All you gotta do is like go to the escape pod ship at the beginning. They just leave. Just leave. <laughs> yeah, the the cat was aligning itself which with whoever is like stronger, the most likely to survive. Or, yeah, or, yeah. Or as was suggested in the film, put them in cryo sleep and let's go fucking home. Right. Oh, the, the guy who got like <laughs> yeah, just bit. put him put him in the thing with the sleeper with with, with face attached to his, on his face. face. Yeah, let's he's go. Like, Why let's don't you just here. freeze him? Then they get the alien and they go home. Yeah, didn't Lambert suggest to get the hell out of there first? Like she was the first one. Yeah. Like, hey guys, why don't we get out of here? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so useless Lambert actually had the best idea of the whole group. <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> talk about the most famous scene in this movie? The chest burster scene. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's hear it. Hello, Wait, does baby. He... Hello, my God baby. damn it! Stop it, dude. <laughs> Spaceballs. I can't. <laughs> well, in Spaceballs, they got John Hurt to play the. Yeah, character. he's the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Not again! <laughs> I'll have what he's having. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mel Brooks, <laughs> dickhead. Um, who who knows more about the scene, me or Kadish? I don't know. I'm a pretty big fan of this movie. If you can't tell, hey, go for it. Uh, so Ridley Scott, when preparing for this scene, didn't tell any of the actors. What was going to happen? Yeah. He set the scene. Obviously, he had the guy have the, on the table and he had like the shirt on and stuff like that. And he's like, okay, guys, he's sick. You guys got to help him. Do your best, you know, act the scene out. It's kind of ad libbed. It's not really scripted, scripted, but it's like, hey, this is happening. React. And he didn't tell anybody that this freaking giant bloody penis was going to come <laughs> out of the dude's chest. So, all those reaction shots of like Sigourney Weaver and the chick who plays Lambert, uh-huh. it's all real. And like when it splashes up on them. Yeah, and she's like, ah, and she like freaks out. That's all legit. Like, that's not acting. And that's they all just, just stop. And they're all just, whoa, what yeah. just happened? Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it's funny because, you know, they, the actors all had an idea of what the scene uh, was about and what was going to happen. But what Ridley Scott didn't tell them was like, what the blood reaction was going to be. Right. And there's actually a scene in there where like, you, you know, the initial chest burst, you, you see like the blood burst on John Hurt's chest. Mm-hmm. And that was actually uh, the first take of the scene where like it was supposed to come through the shirt, but the shirt didn't rip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that was actually a a blooper. But Ridley Scott chose to keep it in the movie as the precursor to like the, the thing actually working. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it works so much better. And, and, yeah. and, and it was when basically like they had to reset the scene and basically like when the blood did spurt out, nobody was expecting that much blood. And so the reactions <laughs> when they got hit by it were, were all real. Um, but uh, yeah, like they had never seen like any um, artwork of the alien. Nobody had any idea what it looked like. And so like when this thing popped out, Everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> do, you, awesome. do you guys know anything about the actor that they got to play the actual alien? No. Mm-mm. Nothing? He's like, I know, um, I know a little bit. He's like some, well, I, yeah, I know just a little bit too, but he's like, he's some super lanky, skinny, like uh, Nigerian guy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, the casting director saw him in a pub and basically there it was like, he's over six feet tall and he's got really skinny arms. We yeah. could use this guy. And so like, they approached him and they were like, "Hey, you ever thought about acting?" And he was oh like, man, no. he died very young. The guy who played the alien. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Ninety-two. Oof. Yeah, he was uh, thirty-nine. Well, it's, it's kind of funny. Like half the cast of this movie is dead. <laughs> yeah. <now>. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an old movie, man. <laughs> yeah, well, it's forty years old, right? Yeah, and they were all what thirties or forties when they made it. Yeah, it's, uh, getting up there. Tom Skerritt's still alive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I love this movie. I'm going to go ahead and rate it um, right along. Okay, so we rated Aliens 5 out of 5. I think all of us did 5 stars on yeah. that. Um, yeah. This is a very different type of movie. I'm not <clears> rating it 
based on what Aliens is. Aliens mm-hmm. is like mm-hmm. James Cameron, very sequel, you know, action packed. It's an action sci fi, not a horror sci fi. Um, but I still think that this movie is a five star movie. I freaking love it. I love everything about it. Mm-hmm. I love the the just the musical motifs and the visuals and the science fiction aspect of it with like the old tactile freaking keyboards and the 70s, you know, style computers and stuff like that. I think any movie that needs to be made in this world needs to fit into that mold. Otherwise, it breaks the world for me. That's why I don't like Prometheus and I don't like Alien Covenant because they're all too new sci-fi. They got holograms and flat screens and all this bullshit. It just doesn't fit. Like I, the, the way that this world feels in this movie is the way that the world needs to feel in all movies that have anything to do with this. But uh, five out of five for me. Five out of five. Yeah. How about you, buddy? Been mulling this around. You know, I'm really stingy. You're very yeah. stingy with your five stars. I'm really stingy with my five stars. Yeah. Um, I think I'm there. <laughs> I think I'm right there with you. All right. Because. You know, I have to think back about this is a 1979 movie. Yeah. So it was made in 2009, two, or 2019. This is a 2009 movie, and, and, I, and I look back at it, and I'm still thoroughly entertained. I'm still scared. Jonesy still makes me jump. When he's all, <laughs> <laughs> I freaking you, you know, was in on it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, the, char- the characters are all still very believable. To me, um, you, you know, I think I think this this is the movie that started out our our societal intrinsic distrust of of synthetic life forms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. do we all really trust a robot or AI or AI? No, nope, we do not, and it's because of fucking Ash. <laughs> I, I thoroughly believe that, at least as far as I'm concerned. Th- that was the the the. the, the the, the, the start of that, you know, yeah. um, except maybe how, what are you doing, Dave? Yeah. Um, <laughs> 2001 is pretty yeah, obviously, yeah, right? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Well, that's where but, he was inspired by that. Yeah. So it um, makes sense. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go five stars. Screw it. Nice. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. You know, I'm not going to judge it on its terrible explosion of the Nostromo <laughs> at the end because it's, it's like, it's like Star Wars Death Star blow up bad. It's not good. Oh, I thought the I thought I thought Star Wars Death Star blow up was better than yeah, this it one. Is, it is better than that. Yeah. But you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna detract. I'm not giving. It was ten. It was yeah. like five seconds out of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, fine. For sure. Whatever. Um, good movie, man. Yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, five stars. Five stars. Five out of five. Nice. Same as Aliens Two. After that, <laughs> man. The, the, Ooh, the, that's the, a the steep curve, decline. It goes down really, really hard, really hard, fast. <laughs> But yeah, I love this movie. Um, I own it now on digital Ooh. for five dollars on, on Amazon. Um, right on, good stuff. I'm gonna watch it again here pretty soon. Cool, I think. Jude, so this does not have the rewatchability for me that Aliens does. Okay, um, that being said, um, there's so so much good stuff in this movie, and this kind of set the stage for um, like a lot of sci fi and a lot of like in space horror movies like this this movie did it right and the dynamic between the characters and how everything looks except for the alien um good stuff a lot of good stuff so it's not five stars for me but i'm gonna give it uh four evil cats that's pretty good yeah four evil cats not bad it's too many evil cats. <laughs> freaking cat was in on it the whole goddamn time okay shall we uh, so this is a very seminal movie in cinema history. Um, it not only elevated the horror genre, but also elevated the sci-fi genre. It kind of set the stage, kind of like how Vader mentioned, where, for like a whole generation of like how they view the future in mm-hmm. terms of like how it looks, the aesthetic. Um, it's it's a very brilliantly crafted film. It spawned a huge franchise. Um, there's, It's Ridley Scott's first masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, so, like, there's a lot of things to credit to this movie, um, and it is a five-star movie. Nice. Like, soup to nuts, five stars. So. Way to go, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> I stand on my heel. Four stars feel pretty freaking good, though. Yeah, it's um, good. Great. Well, hey, the table is pretty much in agreement. That doesn't happen Possibly often. the second best rated movie 
we've ever reviewed. Possibly. I'm going to get a lot of shit for The Shining when that comes out. (laughs) (laughs) I went hard on that movie. Yeah. Um, Yeah. All right. Cool. Great. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. Remember to go to criticlist.com and uh, get yourself an account over there and help us review awesome movies or terrible ones if you want. Uh, It's a great free speech forward platform where you get to go and talk your piece about any movie that you want. Uh, We're hoping that it grows to the point where it's going to take out rotten tomatoes. Get rid of that freaking (laughs) that. That's the work to do. Yeah. That freaking terrible platform with its <laughs> skewed audience ratings. Hey, and man. Seriously. Paid and bought for critic ratings. If Disney wants to pay me money <laughs> to write reviews about their shitty shows, I'm okay. Really? I'm, yeah, dude, I'll do it. I'm, I'm easy. I will ban you. <laughs> yeah, I'm t- easy. Technically, Alien is now a Disney movie. Oh, uh, why'd you say that? Give me some cheddar. Ugh. Some cheddar. So this is the end of our spooky month. It yeah. is. Yeah, it's the end. October. Next is uh, Retro We Watch. Mm-hmm. Well, we watch. Wet well, we watch, where we do uh, movies from 1959 to 1969? Pre-70. Pre-70? Pre-70. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to uh, start with uh, Seven Samurai. Seven Samurai next week, guys. Going to have a lot of fun. That's pretty crazy. That's deep. That's deep. I've never seen it before. That is not Mars Martian attacks from deep outer space it movies. Kurosawa's masterpiece. Yeah, I'm Great. kind so of worried. No bat gotta... rat spider crabs in this Listen, movie. Not yet. If you, if Zack all... Snyder wouldn't have anything to steal if it wasn't for uh, <laughs> Please don't get all Professor on us. Oh, he's going to get Professor on us. He's going to get Professor on us. Get ready, man. Get I'm ready. I'm getting really You're, you're going to have to read the movie, though, unfortunately, Vader. I've been reading a lot of movies. They, TV they've never dubbed it? Nope. Oh, wow. Oh, good for them. Uh, yeah, November starts our retro rewatch month, so buckle up, folks. We're going to be doing some old school stuff coming up here. Uh, Can we put the schedule up in Discord so yeah. we, I know what we're watching and when, please? Yeah, for or sure. You check your email. Yeah, but we well, need- we want, I want people to know what we're watching, too. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> so. All right, folks. Thanks so much for watching the show. Really appreciate it. Hope you had a great time this spooky month. Safe October. See you next week. Stay salty. <laughs>